two spherical conductors of radii A and B are separated by a distance much greater than the radius of either sphere. The spheres are connected by a conducting wire, as shown. The charges on each of the spheres, QA and QB, are unknown, is uniformly distributed, and are in electrostatic equilibrium. Find the ratio of the charge on each surface and electric fields at the surfaces of the spheres. So our goal for this problem is to just figure out the ratio of how much charge is on either sphere and also the ratio of the electric fields on the surfaces of each of the spheres. Let's start by drawing our own sketch. Here's the sphere of radius A and separated by a very long wire is another sphere of radius B. Both spheres are conducting spheres and they have an amount of charge that is uniformly distributed on either sphere. The thing we do know that connects the spheres besides the wire that's physically connecting them is the fact that since they are connected by a conducting wire, the electric potential on each sphere must be equal. And this is because we've shown earlier that the, that the electric potential in a conductor in electrostatic equilibrium is constant everywhere on the conductor. Well, since these are three conductors all connected, this is essentially one big conductor. Therefore, the electric potential on sphere A must be equal to the electric potential on sphere B. We have shown previously that the electric potential from the center of a conducting sphere is equal to the Coulomb constant times the charge on the sphere divided by the distance from the center of the sphere. And this is for values of r greater than or equal to the radius of the sphere. Well, here we have two conducting spheres of radius a and b respectively. So the electric potential on sphere a is given by k q a over the radius of sphere A. And the electric potential on sphere B is equal to KQB over the radius of sphere B. Now I've equated these two expressions because since these are conductors in electrostatic equilibrium that are connected, the electric potential is constant on each conductor. Well, now that we have this relationship between the electric potential and the charges on each conductor, we could determine the ratio of the charge on each sphere. We have the ratio of the charge on sphere A over its radius. Well, I'll just go ahead and just call that A is equal to the ratio of the charge on sphere B over its radius. Therefore, we have the ratio of charge on A to the charge on sphere B is equal to the ratio of the radii. Now, if you look at this, this means that the charge on sphere A is equal to the ratio of their radii times the charge on sphere B. Since sphere A is larger than sphere B, this must mean that the charge on sphere A is bigger than the charge on sphere B. Alternatively, if sphere A had a smaller radius than sphere B, then the charge on sphere A would be smaller than the charge on sphere B. So we know now that the ratio of the charges on these spheres in electrostatic equilibrium is equal to the ratio of their radii. So how do you think we can go about finding the ratio of the electric fields on each sphere? Well, we've shown previously 
that the electric field due to a sphere of charge as a function of the distance from that sphere of charge is equal to kq over r squared, where here r is a value greater than or equal to the radius of the sphere, and we're assuming that since these are conductors, all of the charge lies on the surface of these conductors. We had used Gauss's law previously to show this result. Now that we have this result, let's go ahead and find the ratio of the electric field on each sphere. So the electric field on sphere A is equal to kq over A squared. This is going to be divided by the electric field on sphere B, which is equal to kq over the radius of sphere B. And I should, I forgot my subscripts on the charges. The charge on sphere A is QA, and the charge on sphere B is QB. Well, we can now simplify a little bit because the Ks cancel. And now we have the ratio of the electric fields on sphere A to sphere B is equal to QA over QB, the ratio of the charges, times B squared over A squared when we flip and multiply. Well, we have shown that the ratio of the charges, A to B, is equal to the ratio of the radii of the respective spheres. And this is times b squared over a squared. We could simplify this. An a in the numerator cancels with 1 in the denominator. A b in the denominator cancels with 1 in the numerator. So we now have the ratio of the electric fields of sphere a to sphere b is equal to the ratio of the radius of sphere b to the radius of sphere A. So what does this mean? Well, if we are to compare directly the electric field of sphere A to the electric field of sphere B, looking at this, since the radius of sphere A is bigger than the radius of sphere B, the electric field on sphere A at the surface must be smaller than the electric field on sphere B at its surface. And that's because when you divide by a number that is larger than the number in the numerator, the fraction is a smaller value. So what this is saying is the larger the sphere, the smaller the electric field is at the surface of the sphere.